Hey what is up guys, Speed Studios here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to host your own Minecraft server for free using Google Compute Engine. Alright, let's get going. First of all, you want to log into your Google Cloud account on the Google Cloud console. No worries if you don't already have an account, you can sign up with your Google account and you'll get a free trial with 90 days on the trial and £200 worth of credits. The first thing you want to do is click select a project and then click create new project or new project at the top give it a name and then you should come and be greeted with something that looks like this okay now the first thing you want to do is you want to go up to the top left where it says navigation menu click down click compute engine and then vm instances next you want to click create after compute engine has finished getting ready don't worry if it takes a little while for the compute engine to set up. It normally takes about two to five minutes for me. If your compute engine is taking a little while to set up, you can refresh the page and usually it normally sorts things out. Once it's all set up, you can click create. And then we want to name our VM instance. I'm going to call it MC-Server, but you can call it whatever you want. You just want to take note of it so you can use this later. Okay, so then you want to choose your region which is basically where you want the server to be and you want to put it as close to where you live as possible so you get the best performance out of the servers. All right, next you want to choose your machine configuration. I'm just going to go with the default here because it works reasonably well. It's quite cheap and it means you won't burn through all your credits too quickly. Now you want to change the boot disk here to be an SSD persistence disk. I'm going to set mine to be 20 gigabytes. Next, I want you to go down to the bottom where it says Management, Security Disk, Networking, Sole Tenancy. Click this, and then you want to move over the disks, and you want to add a new disk. We shall call this disk, let's say, MC-Disk. And then we're going to say it is a SSD persistent disk under type, and then we want to set it to be read and write, and I'm going to change the size to be 20 gigabytes. Click Done. And now you have your disk set up. Now we want to go to networking. We want to add the tag mc-server in the network tags. And then we'll use this field later to create a firewall rule to allow your friends to join your server. We next want to click on network interface. And then we're going to choose create IP address underneath the external IP dropdown. We're going to name this, I'm going to say mcs-ip, microserver IP. Click reserve and it should take you through to this page. We've now set up our Minecraft VM and we can click create. Okay, once your Minecraft server is all set up and running, you should see this little tick here and you want to go over to where it says SSH underneath connect and click the button. Right, once your SSH terminal is loaded up, I want you to write sudo mkdir, so we're making a new directory, dash p, slash home slash minecraft where you can call this final part whatever you'd like i'm calling it minecraft just for ease of use okay now we want to navigate to this directory using cd slash home slash minecraft and run the following command i'm going to put this in a paste bin to make it easier for you guys so don't worry about typing it all out Now that the disk has been formatted, we want to mount it to our directory. Okay, now uh, we need to mount our disk to the directory. So depending on what you've named your disk, I've named my mc-disk. So if you've changed your name, it will name it something different. You just need to type Google dash and then the name of your disk, like shown here. Also, if you've put, you're going to put your Minecraft server in a different directory to what I've named mine, you want to change home slash Minecraft to home slash whatever your name is. Hit enter. Okay, so I've already got the disk mounted to this directory, but for you, it should say no, no words there. Now we need to set it up so we can allow your friends to join. So we want to go to navigation menu and then we want to find VPC network. Here we go. Click on that. Now we want to click on default. Now we want to go to the firewalls tab. And we want to click add new firewall rule. Let's name this MC-Rule 
and we want to set the targets to be specified targets. Oh, it's already done for us, fantastic. Then we want to put the target tags as mc-server, whatever you've named your server. We want to set the source filter to be IP ranges, and then we want to put 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 for the source IP ranges. Okay, we want to specify the protocols. We want to choose TCP, and we're going to put 25565 as your port. And now you want to click Create. Okay, it's time to install the dependencies in order to be able to run the Minecraft server. So we want to go back to our SSH terminal and type in the following command. This will update our VM instance and make sure that all the packages are up to date. Next, we want to install the Java runtime environment using the following command. Okay, now that the Java runtime environment is installed, you want to now navigate to your directory where you want to put your Minecraft server if you haven't already. So for me, I would just do slash home slash Minecraft, but I'm already in this file folder. All right, there we go. Because this folder contains our mounted disk, we need special access to run commands on it. So you can do that through typing in sudo su and hitting enter. Right, now we've got root commands. Right, in order to install our Minecraft server, we want to first get a package called uh, wget. So studio app get install wget. Let that download, type y and then hit enter. And now it's installed, we can type get wget and we can navigate to the Minecraft server download page where it says download Minecraft server dot jar, whatever version you want to run, right click and click copy link address, go back to our SSH terminal and paste it in with control V. Hit enter and it should download the server for us. Fantastic. Okay, now we want to start the server for the first time using the following command. And we're typing in no GUI at the end so that we can run it in the command line. Hit enter. Okay, so the first time it runs, we're going to see some errors. And that's because basically we need to accept the EULA, which is like a user agreement, shall we say, for the Minecraft server. So type in nano EULA.txt. And where it says false, you want to change this to be true with a lowercase t. Press control, then X, and then let go, and then press Y now to save the changes and hit enter. Fantastic. Okay. Now that we've set up the EULA, we want to type ls-l to see all our files. And you'll see a file called server.properties. In here, this is where you can customize your server, change the name, add an icon, change the max player limit, anything you want. So we're going to go into server.properties by typing nano server.properties. And then we're going to scroll down to where it says max players. And I'm going to change it to 50. You can put any number you want, but you can basically have an unlimited number of players on your server. Press Control, then X. Type the letter Y, and then hit Enter to save. Fantastic. Okay, so if we want to run this server continuously, we're going to have to install an extra program called Screen, which basically allows the program to continue running in the background even if you close this SSH terminal. So to install Screen, we're going to do sudo apt get install dash Y screen. Okay. Once this is installed, we can finally run our Minecraft server. You want to type in screen dash capital S and then call whatever, the whatever you want to call the screen. So I'm going to call it Minecraft just for ease. And then you want to type in your Java command. Java dash XMS 1G dash XMX 3G dash jar server dot jar. No GUI. Okay, so I recommend using these parameters for memory because your VM instance, if you've used the same one as me, is about four gigabytes, and this will allow your server to be optimized quite nicely. Okay, let's hit enter and run the server. Okay, we can now see that your micro server has been set up. If you want to leave the screen here, you can press Control and A at the same time, and then press D. 
and that should allow you to leave. If you ever want to go back into it again, just type in sudo screen dash r and then the name of your screen. So mine is Minecraft. It's as easy as that. Fantastic. Now I'm going to show you how to get into your server from the Minecraft. Okay, so one more thing before we log onto the server, you need to find your IP to connect to the server. So if we go back to the Google Cloud platform and then we navigate navigation menu, compute engine, VM instances, you should be greeted with this page here. And we want to copy the external IP. Here we are in Minecraft. So to join your server, you want to use that IP that we copied from the VM instances page. I'll once again show you here under external IP. You want to go into Minecraft, type this in, colon, and then 25565, which is the port we set up earlier. Let's click join server. But here we are in your very own Minecraft server. If you found this video useful or helpful, please hit a like, comment, subscribe. Every like helps out the YouTube algorithm. Let's it know that other people should see this content too. I really hope you found it useful and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you.